Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf. I'm your chairman and uh, this particular uh, video, extremely important. Uh, we're re remaking one of our uh, earlier videos here with the help of Scully. And uh, this is a, a, a true to life skeleton. It's a female skeleton. And uh, she is absolutely instrumental in helping our students understand how not to move the body and how to allow the body to move. Now, our anatomy is so beautifully designed and it, it's already wired for beautiful survival without strain, okay? So it's important that, you know, just to weed out some of the things that you hear in the golf industry, it's important to weed those things out so you don't cause yourself, you know, a lot of damage and a lot of waste of time. That's the last thing you want to do is waste your time when you're learning this game. You want to learn it right and you want to learn it beautifully right out of the gate. So without, uh, uh, without further ado, the attention I want, I want to put on is in this section here. So you've got your pelvis. So your rib cage and pelvis are reunited by the spine. So you notice how the spine goes from the back of the head all the way down to your tailbone, your sacrum. And here are the ball sockets of your hips. So you'll notice that the ball sockets of the hips are really nicely designed for the rotational aspect of the swing. It's actually the full leg that rotates. And what happens is you'll, you'll realize when I give you a close up of the sacrum here and the lower spine and, and throughout the whole spine, you'll realize that the rib cage and pelvis are not made to twist. You don't want to feel like you're resisting with the lower body and try to coil the upper body against it because it really isn't designed for that at all. It should be avoided at all costs. So you've got this that turns on top of this turntable here and I will demonstrate a couple of things right now. So let me give you a little bit more of a close up. Let me get my camera gear here. Beautiful. So you'll notice that right here, just above the sacrum, right? Just at the top of the sacrum here, there's um, a little wing that prevents the lowest vertebrae from spinning out. It's called the facet joint. So that's so, see it right over here, okay? So that is, so the spine stays intact. So every vertebrae has a built-in facet joint to prevent the vertebrae on top of it from spinning out. The last thing you want to do is cut your spinal cord. So, thank you very much, Scully. Get my club here. Now, if you look at a lot of different sports, the first thing that you could do is you take, if you, let's say you take a stone, you want to skip it on the pond here, so the brain is going to go get the ground. It's going to use the ground to get the body out of the way so you have access to that pond. Now I can come back and show you the shoulders, but what I want, I want you to see is that the shoulders, you've got a clavicle and a scapula that sit on top of the rib cage. And they have about 20 degrees of range. So if you don't move your body, you're going to hit yourself. Not a good idea. So I want to go that way. The brain's going to go get the ground, use the ground to get the body out of the way. It's called a kinetic chain, kinetic sequence. And you already have that in spades built right into the system through our four million years of evolution. For two and a half of those million years, we were hunter gatherers and we threw a lot of stuff at our food. So there's that kinetic chain. Now, if I want to gather that, you notice your baseball pitcher, they're going to gather this way. Well, you can see rib cage and pelvis moving on top of the legs. If I wanted to snap a punch, I'm snapping a punch in that direction. I would never do this. Immediately, when you snap a punch towards something, your brain's going to go get the ground. It's going to use the ground to get your body out of the way so you have access to snap that punch. Baseball pitchers, boxers, martial artists, we call this a retraction. Okay, so left side moves out of the way so the right side can plow through and our body has this amazing ability through, through the legs and core and we're actually built to do circles. So if you look at ping pong, it's a circular motion with the arm. You notice it's a circular motion with the body for a lot of the movements. Well, it's the same thing in golf. 
So the last thing you want to do is try to resist with your legs and try to coil this against this. You're just going to destroy your spine when you do that. That's why many of you have got sore backs when you're done. So how does it work? Well, here are a couple of easy analogies for you. So imagine you got a sword in your hands, okay? Grab the club right at the bottom of the shaft, not on the club head, not there, just right at the bottom of the shaft, and feel like you're going to use this sword to cut through a bamboo shoot. So notice, in order for you not to cut yourself, you got to get out of the way, right? So the first thing the brain does is goes to the ground, uses the ground to get the body out of the way so we can get all the way through that bamboo shoot. Same thing with the lead side. So if I do this, I'm just smushing my arm up against my rib cage. What I want to do is I want to feel like I'm really getting out of the way. So notice how the brain removes my body from the way. How did it do that? It went to the ground. So my right leg goes to the ground, removes my body out of the way. Now it feels like I can slash the sword with authority. So you notice what happened. As the body gets my, the, as my legs get my body out of the way, which my rib cage and pelvis, it's also getting ready to shift the weight back to that front leg. And that weight shift happens from behind. So if you resist and you prevent that, that beautiful rotation from occurring, you're not doing yourself any favors when it comes to going back toward the target afterwards. You're going to have to really struggle through your weight shift. That's why so many of you have issues with weight shift and clearing your body in the opposite direction. So when you have this beautiful big backswing, you get more rotational momentum to get through. Just ask Bubba Watson. So, so Bubba Watson, it, for many years, was number one on tour and driving distance and number one in greens and regulation. Check it out, okay? So here's a homemade swing that was performing so well. And oh, don't copy that swing. That's, you know, you don't want to swing like that. Yeah, you do. That's how he did. No lessons. So instinctively, he followed what felt best for his body. Same thing for Jack, same thing for Sam Sneed. To all the greatest players who've ever lived, you'll see empirically all the best stats are within those players. Well, you're already wired for that. So I'm just showing you how to allow things to happen and what to ignore, right? So last thing you want to do is hurt yourself. We're going to gather the backswing so that we can deliver powerfully through the ball and toward the target. Now, that's just scratching the surface for many of you right now, especially if you've never seen and never been with wisdom in golf before. So we gather a backswing so we can effortlessly whip the snot out of the club that way. That means if it's effortless and it's low in effort or low in strain, you're not going to hurt yourself. And if you're not going to hurt yourself, you can practice longer, you can play a lot more, you don't have to waste any time going to the gym or the physiotherapist or the chiropractor. Now we can actually get down to playing golf and practicing what we want, okay? So I'm going that way. So I got a target. Let's say I'm going to do a draw. I'm going to play the ball a bit back in my stance, close the face a little bit. My attention's over there. So I'm going to feel the weight of the sword and I'm going to gather it and I'm going to release the weight of that sword into that picture. So that gathering that, I don't know if any of you have seen Fernando Valenzuela in action, that was in my youth, this huge back, huge turn, he'd go to see second plate, he'd be, he couldn't even see the plate from his windup, but he knew where it was, and he used every ounce of that little body of his to deliver that pitch to the plate. And that's why he was out there for, a, for quite a long time. So the most efficient motions are the ones that are effortless. And that's where we want to go with this, okay? So please stop resisting with your legs in the backswing. You're not built for that. And use this beautiful added momentum. Now, you'll want to, you know, look at a few of my videos to help you out here. Look at battering ram Sean Clement. Look at... Um, uh, kettlebell drill Sean Clement so that you get a really good idea of how the arm swing and the body turn move together. 
So uh, you'll see uh, arm swing versus body turn as well. Sean Clement has a beautiful video and that'll really get your feet wet and get you on your way to having a very powerful, very effortless golf swing that you can use until you're 105 years old. Who knows? It's going to be even longer by then, right? All the best.